<laughs> okay, here we are having a good time on Monday. Um, this is Mina, Marco, and me on Monday, talking about energy on Monday. And uh, we're happy to be together again. We like being together. So on the right, you see a picture of uh, Marco Mangelsdorf in Prohibition Solar in Hilo. And in the middle, um, it's a gender sandwich, I might add. It, it's Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, and now energy dynamics consultant. We are happy to have you guys around to tell us what's going on in energy. So, Marco, why don't you lead off? What's the news? Jay Fidel, Jay <laughs> Fidel, every Monday you greet me, smart and right, wise and bright. You look happy to see me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> In case you're wondering, that's my slightly altered rendition of Edelweiss from The Sound of Music. <laughs> and we do have a better picture, which we're going to show later. <laughs> oh, goodness, Jay. It, uh, you know, I, I feel uh, honored and, an, and it's a real treat to be able to speak to two of my favorite energy people now uh, three times in a row over the past uh, past several Mondays. So I'm, I'm practically speechless. Uh, there's so much to talk about and uh, such exciting times uh, in the energy world. Uh, it's almost, uh, where, where does one start? Where does one start? Uh, maybe I'll start with uh, kind of my continuing crusade on uh, what the state can and should be doing uh, with greater gusto uh, as far as weaning us off of our substantial dependency on imported fossil fuels for transportation. There was uh, a piece in today's advertiser by Katie Mickelseth uh, about uh, PAR Hawaii, which is a um, petroleum supplier to the state, saying that uh, they will, quote, adjust to a switch away from oil in keeping with the state's goal to eliminate fossil fuel use, close quote. And uh, they don't really say how they're going to do that, except that they want to be part of the solution. Uh, but I, I just continue to... Uh, to be puzzled as to how uh, we can make greater progress uh, towards reducing uh, the 60% of all the petroleum that comes into the state is for transportation and, of course, uh, for inter-island transportation and ground fuel and, of course, uh, inter-island barge uh, service. So I'm, I still don't, uh, don't hear many answers out there or real real proposed solutions. I wasn't at the Verge conference a month or so ago when I believe there was some discussion on transportation, but um, I'm eager for, uh, for better, better ideas and uh, more implementable plans to, to, to go in that direction because we're just not making much progress. Marco, you should plan to come to uh, Clean Energy Day on uh, August 16th. A, a big part of this, that is about transportation. Um, and maybe you get some ideas there. If not, then you can certainly watch the video or the stream. But uh, let, me, let, me go, let me respond on, on uh, the article you mentioned. Very interesting. Um, came talking about, uh, about the, the sailor, the sailor who shouldn't fight with the waves. And uh, yeah, the metaphor is that, you know, the coming of, um, of clean energy is, is a wave that we shouldn't be fighting with. And they shouldn't be fighting. Well, what, and I thought that was very poetic. On the other hand, I looked through for an example of what they might do, and I didn't see anything. So clearly this is something that we ought to you know, follow up in our coverage about PAR and find out what they actually do, because uh, it's not easy to figure out something you know, for a petroleum. But they're not heavily invested in petroleum assets. They're sort of a reseller, I think. Um, and so they could resell other things. Possibly there was an implication in that article possibly LNG, don't you think? Yeah, and I guess I just still remain puzzled, and hopefully Mina can provide some insight on this. I remain puzzled as far as where we are collectively at regarding LNG. I mean, with the departure of NextEra, lock, stock, and, and barrels, uh, does this essentially mean, and the, and the cancellation, uh, ECO's cancellation of that contract with Fortis, in, in Canada, I mean, is is this essentially the beginning of, of the end of their efforts and perhaps Hawaii Gas's efforts and others' efforts to make LNG a player out here? Or is it too too soon to tell? I mean, when you've got a, 
uh, a governor, chief executive, who has been very clear in his opposition along with a number of the environmental groups. I mean, uh, have we kind of crossed the proverbial Rubicon in terms of we're not going to go down, we're not going to cross that LNG river, and we're going to pull back, and we're going to go in a different direction? I mean, what do you think, Mina? Do you think we're, we're there? Well, I, I think, you know, we have to look at the situation for Hawaii Gas and, you know, what are the options for them as they move forward to try to lower costs, bring in um, more, um, less volatile fuels for themselves, too. So, you know, while we might have crossed Hawaii Electric out of the picture, we forget about the needs of Hawaii Gas and how they can service their customers with a um, uh, lower pricing um, and and a, a fuel that is not dependent on oil pricing and maybe less volatile. Um, and 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 again, how do we? deal with their dependency on the refineries for synthetic natural gas um, to, to meet their um, demand. So, you know, it, it, it's a pretty complicated picture out there on how these fuels are interrelated. And, you know, the other thing I go back to is how do we address the uh, refinery task force report which came out about two years ago when we thought one or both of the refineries was going out of business. I mean there's still some critical questions there to be answered. Um, one being um, the um, single point mooring um, system controlled by the refinery which limits options for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we ought to uh, have Hawaii Gas come on the show and talk to them, see uh, you know, how they feel about this. I, I think what's threatening about it is that um, David Ige made two statements uh, which you know, sort of pulled the rug out from a lot of people who were uh, charged with making the determination on those two questions, namely Nextera and LNG. And he had a lot to say, uh, by implication anyway, to the PUC about uh, NextEra, and, and uh, so his wish was granted on the NextEra uh, opinion, and he also made this LNG opinion, and um, I wonder whether his wish will be granted on that too, um, either by the PUC or by, you know, the fact that people don't want to cross him. Um, but, but the fact is that uh, uh, I never heard a reason, did you guys hear a reason why um, uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian Electric pulled the plug on that contract other than perhaps uh, that NextEra wasn't going to be around to help fund it? Um, is there another reason? Well, I think it was tied to, um, I, again, in the PSIP, if I remember correctly, they were supposed to bring in a combined cycle turbine to be run on LNG, and that was one of the um, ways that they can, they could offer um, uh, customer saving, and, um, and 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 now without Nextera there, the equation changes because you know again they don't have this combined cycle turbine, and they don't have. The, um, the buying power of NextEra. So, you know, they have to go back and recalculate costs. Well, the, the arguments for it and against it, for that matter, are still the same. Um, but, uh, you know, it's not clear to me that that move by Hawaiian Electric, electric uh, actually represents an, an end of the initiative. Um, Marco, do you think it might still be alive somehow? That... Uh LNG, the LN, a, a contract for Hawaiian Electric to purchase LNG uh, from a mainland company is still alive. Is that what you're asking? Yep. Uh, I, I really don't know, Jay. I mean, I know they put a, a fair amount of effort into going down the LNG path, and that's why uh, I posed the question that I did. I just don't know kind of where we are collectively in terms of uh, of 
continuing at all down that path or, or whether or whether we're not. And uh, I, I, would, I think your idea to bring somebody like Alicia Moy, who's uh, head of Hawaii Gas uh, on the show, hopefully in the weeks to come would make a lot of sense. And it could be Mina, Marco, Jay, and Alicia. I think it would be great to have um, Alicia on either there in the studio or by phone because uh, she'd, be, she'd be a great uh, person to have on and speak from the perspective of Hawaii Gas as far as kind of where, where they're at these days. Yeah, Mina, Marco, me, and Moy on Monday. Got it? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that's, that's another answer. Well, well done. <laughs> okay, let's well, talk about... Go ahead. What's missing here is, you know, if no LNG, what's plan B? So what is this, the EGA's administration's plan to move us to 100% renewable in an affordable way, um, you know, with customer savings as, as we move forward? And that's what we don't have. We don't have a clear... Plan B, you know, what, we, what we've what we had is a no, a no to LNG, no to next era, uh, but we've never heard what Plan B is. I, I think that's true. Um, um, when is it coming? Has anybody said they're going to provide a Plan B? Is anybody working on a Plan B? Uh, either directly or through one of those consultants who writes lengthy reports. Um, does anybody know? You guys know? Well, it's not no. as grand as, as, as a Plan B, but, I mean, there is the possibility, from what I understand, of being able to use propane as a substitute fuel for, for an oil-based uh, fuel in power generation that would not necessarily require in fact, it would not require as an expensive an investment in infrastructure as you would need for LNG. And you can, at least in, in certain combustion turbines, you can switch over the fuel source from uh, from naphtha or some type of oil-based product to, to propane without a whole lot of fuss. In other words, it's not super, super expensive. That's uh, if the case can be made that there could be near-term and, let's say, mid-term savings by going from one fossil fuel to another. So I, I believe that that's something that has been looked at by a number of parties. So that doesn't really constitute perhaps a plan B per se. But, uh, I know, uh, you know, being someone who is, who's got his kind of nose to the, the, the energy grindstone on a daily basis in terms of living and breathing a business that is dependent on revenue, not in three years or, or 19 years or, or 2045 years, but in the here and now, uh, I think looking at uh, shorter term not so much solutions, but shorter-term measures that we can take to go with a cheaper and with a cleaner-burning uh, fossil fuel source, at least for power generation, is certainly worth, worth looking at. Yeah, it, doesn't, it looks a little bleak, though, in, in, in terms of uh, the fact that, you know, we've been talking about LNG for at least five years, and uh, may I say we don't have a decision on it yet. Um, a or nay, it's not, not clear. I have a I have a question for Marco. I mean, you know, one of the things that we, I, I you know, propane is still um, a derivative of petroleum. So, you know, propane prices are still tied to oil pricing, and so one of the things that was attractive about LNG was. Uh, and the pricing of LNG was it was always sold at a discount to oil. So how, I mean, I can understand more savings in efficiency, um, you know, as you, if you, you know, switch to um, uh, a gaseous fuel. But I, you know, I, I don't get how you can get to savings if propane is still tied to oil pricing. Well, the problem, well, the problem is, uh, you know, this kind of thing has to be socialized, just the way LNG had to be socialized. And it's hard to socialize any initiative in Hawaii, ne? Um, because, uh, you know, everybody comes out of the woodwork and they have, uh, they have reasons against it. And we never seem to settle down. I mean, we, we had that uh, IRP pr process that had 80 uh, 
interveners, stakeholder people. It went on for years and, and it really never resolved anything. Um, and I think we're killing time. Um, you know, if you, wanna, if you wanna have a new idea, a plan B, a new fuel, what, what have you, you gotta socialize it, it takes a long time. I think we need leadership on this. And the first thing I'm gonna do when I'm elected governor is I'm gonna take a short break. That's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna take a break now. <laughs> Aloha, my name is Reg Baker and I'm the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. Business in Hawaii is a program that is positive stories about business in Hawaii. Uh, we're tired of hearing the negativity and why it's the wrong place to have a business. We talk about the positive reasons for having a business in Hawaii and, and how to be successful. We broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me each Friday afternoon as we explore the amazing world of science. We bring on interesting guests, scientists from all walks of life, from all walks of science, to talk about the work they do, why they do it, and moreover, why it's interesting to you. What the science really means to your life, its impacts on you, how it's shaping the world around you, and why you should care about it. I do hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. for Likeable Science. Well, we were talking in the break um, about, you know, the, the, uh, the, the need to go, you know, directly to renewables. So we have 2045, and everybody sees 2045. It's not on my watch. It's way out there. It's way out for my kids. You know, I'll be gone by 2045, so I'm not going to get too concerned about this. And so the, the metronome ticks every day. It ticks, and really very little happens in terms of a, you know, a collaborative decision, a collaborative uh, process even. Um, to get somewhere. So, I mean, isn't, isn't, isn't the point that, that you have to avoid anything that takes us off the road? Uh, you have to avoid anything, um, you know, that gets in the way. Um, the distractions are not permitted. And we just, we find a way to get there as soon as possible. And some people say that as soon as possible means just use the renewables and pay the cost, even though it's going to be formidable. Um, why not do that? Well, I think, uh, I mean, if you, go ahead, Dina. Because you're spending more money than you have to, and the technologies are changing. You know, we're, we're in an uncertain period, so it, it's like, are we, are we going to make these huge investments and be committed to it for the next couple of generations when technology is changing and costs are dropping? Marco, you, you have, I'm, I'm sure you have a plan, whether, I don't know if you can tell us about all of it, but uh, with HIEC, uh, what, what would, if you, if you were able to get into position on HIEC, what would the plan be for HIEC? Well, I think I would look quite a bit at what uh, the folks at uh, KIUC, Kauai Island Utility Cooperative on Kauai, have been doing, which is being... I think, by all accounts, more nimble, more aggressive, uh, and quicker when it comes to bringing online a utility-scale solar at uh, cost-effective pricing. And I think one of the, the trends certainly has been not just in Hawaii, but also in parts of the mainland as well over the past couple of years is that net energy metering is coming under has come under much more scrutiny in terms of well, it's, it's achieved the desired purpose of uh, mainlining, essentially, mainlining rooftop solar, making it more cost-effective uh, and affordable, and that, uh, therefore, we need to uh, look much more, much more closely at uh, the options of, in terms of bringing on, on board uh, cheaper renewable energy sources. And that's what KIUC has done. I mean, they have been much more uh, uh, aggressive, as I said, uh, in terms of, utility scale solar and they are moving forward with uh, their their next uh, project their next utility scale PV project which will have the first uh, in my understanding the first dispatchable battery bank meaning simply that they can store power during the day when the sun is shining and have it be available for their 33,000 or so utility customers uh, members of the co-op uh, when the sun don't shine so I think that's certainly something that's not just pie in the sky, what folks are doing on the mainland, but also what's happening here in our very own state. So I, I see that 
as uh, certainly an avenue worth pursuing. Is, is, with K, greater is KIUC uh, um, including uh, LNG and alternative fuels like that? I don't believe that LNG is part of their part of their vision. I don't recall seeing anything to that effect. By the way, uh, no. What's his name? Uh, Bissell. But, Dave, David Bissell. Is it from KIUC? The CEO. Uh, we'll be speaking at um, Clean Energy Day on August 16th. It'll be very interesting to hear what he has to say about that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, the, the difference between um, Hawaii Island and Kauai are huge, you know, the, in terms of resources. You know, when you look at Hawaii Island, they have uh, resources like geothermal, uh, really good wind, um, good hydro, and biomass. Uh, as, as potential, um, where on Kauai, we're kind of stuck with solar, um, mainly because of the bird issue. But one of the things that KIUC has going for them is, you know, they, they do have the right kinds of generators. They have these quick start generators that can respond to the variability of, of renewables. So, um, so it, it, it you know, the, the, the characteristics aren't exactly the same. Mm. And, you know, with the dispatchable solar, you know... Well, the, I, the, I, I hear what I need to say is, is we, we need to approach this KIUC. island by island because of the difference in renewables and mm, sources, resources on each island. Um, does that mean that the idea of a cable from one island to another is dead? Um, you know, I, I, again, without any kind of clear direction from, from, um, this administration and with the PUC relying on this administration so much, um, you know, I, I, it's hard to tell what the status is. Well, you know, it, it strikes me and I was going to pose this to both of you is, you know, so we, we ramped up you know, to the next era decision. We waited for it, we clamored for it, um, and then it happened. Um, and then, you know, uh, the fallout was that uh, next era pulled up stakes, left town, probably not very pleased about the treatment they got. Um, and they immediately got into a deal in Texas for 18 billion, which by my calculation is nearly four times the amount of money uh, that they were, well, more than four times, the amount of money they were spending or, or uh, planned to spend here on Hawaiian Electric. How about that? Uh, not that they didn't have the resources. And, um, uh, and then the Hawaiian Electric uh, terminated its uh, LNG contract. So, and then, you know, there's a, there's a silence, isn't there? There's a the sound of silence now about where this is all pointing, where it's going. Um, what, what is the next, you know, all we have is, is reflection, but we don't we don't have a, anybody pointing the way forward. What's the next sound we should expect to hear? What's the next sound we should be hearing on on the way to 2045? Well, Jay, what what is the sound when a power plant shuts down and makes not a sound if there's no one there to hear it? Make not a sound. It's very quiet, <laughs> and it's it's also dark. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at peak hours. <laughs> Let, lest you forget, we all are luminous beings, though, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, energy nationally and locally is, to me, it's in a, uh, it's in a, it's in a holding pattern right now. It's a, it's a wait and see pattern, and uh, everybody's waiting for direction. And um, gee, I'm I'm concerned that uh, the, the metronome is still ticking. Uh, and I don't, you know, where is this? Where is this going to come from? Is it going to come from Deep Head uh, after a study? Um, is it going to come from the executive uh, governor? Is it going to come from the PUC? It's come from the utility. Um, is it going to come from the legislature? Uh, I, you know, where, where is it going to come from? You know, and that brings to me, to, to, to my mind, Jay and, and Mina, is, is the, the image of a, a commercial-sized kitchen where you've got many many cooks in the kitchen that all have an idea as to what they want the recipe to be for what they're going to be serving 
as as the afternoon or evening meal, and they have different visions of uh, of what the final product should be, and they brought their own kitchen utensils and their pots and their pans and their their chef hats, chefs hats and so forth. But there is not consensus on on how, on what that meal is going to be that they're going to be presenting to people, and I think that's really where we are. I mean, there's so many chefs in our in our proverbial kitchen, from the PUC to people in the legislature to stakeholders, the utility companies, the environmental groups, uh, industry associations and groups, chamber of commerce. I mean, how in the world? I mean, that, that's the essence of democracy, of course, right? It's sausage making. But uh, to, to switch my, my food metaphor a little bit, but I mean, it, it's pretty daunting in terms of so many folks in the kitchen, but there's not a consensus on what the recipe is going to be. And we, we continue to muddle forward as we have for decades now. Uh, we're making some incremental progress, but are we making as much progress as we need to make? And I think the answer is no. But then what's, what's the alternative? What's the plan B, as, as Mina mentioned? So it's kind of a not very and, optimistic note. But well, I, guess, I guess an interesting question well, is and, what, and, and, what happens... And you know what? Wait, wait one. What happens if we are relegated to muddling through? What, what kind of environment is that? Are we going to go back to the way it was, which was a lot of backbiting, I thought, um, you know, attack the attack the uh, the utility, uh, and I think that's already starting to happen. I kind of feel it's and and um, so. Or are we going? Are we going to have a better time? Um, so what 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 is the state of muddle? I mean, what happens in muddle, uh, Mina? Well, I, I I wanted to go back to the the commercial kitchen analogy. The thing is the the, the PUC under my when I was there along with. Commissioners Akiba and Champley, we created the, um, not necessarily the recipe book. Well, we did cr create the recipe book with the inclination. Mm -hmm. And that, that was, you know, that was to give guidance, you know, and, and, and we had, we had a menu in there with various options to give direction not only to the utility, but all the individual cooks. And I'm not even sure if that's still in play because so many elements of it have been removed from it politically. You think, you think that the cooks have taken your, your, big, your very thoughtful, well-thought-out recipe book, Mina, and said, oh, well done. Thank you so much for your contribution, giving it a cursory look and put it on the high high uh, shelf of the bookshelf where it's, where it's now been gathering dust? It, what they did was they only took the piece that they wanted. They only took the dessert. <laughs> 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 and, 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 and they forgot about the substantive <laughs> meal, you know? Who would ever have expected that our show, Mina, Marco, me, on, <laughs> Mina, Marco, me on Monday, um, would have devolved into a food show. But there you have it. <laughs> Energy, food, <laughs> it's all related. It's all part of, I guess it's all part of sustainability. So we'll take a break. I hope I can get you guys back together soon and we can do some more uh, ruminating about the condition of the, of the industry and uh, of the way to the future. Thank you so much, Marco Mangelsdorf and Mina Morita. It's been great to have this discussion as always. Well, you guys Thank are the sunshines of my life on a Monday. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much.